Hello, I'm District Governor Jerry Ware and I'm here to welcome you to the Youth Exchange Orientation. You know, September is Youth Services Month, so we would like to celebrate all of our youth service programs, our Interact Clubs, the RILA that's being held at Pepe's Place, the Rotaract, and of course our Youth Exchange. Today, I'd like our Youth Exchange people to introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Hong Yu Jian. You can call me Henry. I'm living in Cleveland, Tennessee. I'm studying in Cleveland High School. Hi, I'm Angela Garcia Canto. I'm from Spain. I live in Cookville and I go to Cookville High School. Hi, I'm Claire Di Fazio. I'm from France. Uh, I live in Oak Ridge and I attend Oak Ridge High School. Hi, my name is Francesca Rubizan Panero. I live in Knoxville and I go to Webb uh, School of Knoxville and I'm from Italy. Hello, I'm Jonas Manfredus from Germany and I'm living in Chattanooga and I go to McKelly School. Hi, my name is Pedro de Souza Melo. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I live in Sabreville and I attend to Seymour High School. Hi, I am Joaquin Jorquera. I am from Chile and I live here in Crossville, Tennessee and I attend Cumberland County High School. September is the month for RILA, one of our youth programs. It's an opportunity for each club to send a student or students to Pepe's Place in Crossville. This experience is, is a life changer in developing leadership in our young people. We've been very successful over the years and this year we hope it's going to be the biggest. Our Interact program is growing around the district. We encourage each club to take active parts with their Interactors. Not only should you sponsor them, but we need to have Rotary members visiting those clubs and taking part. Also invite the Interact club members to come to your club and help you on your projects. Through Interact, we can develop our future leaders for Rotary. This year we're so happy to say that of the presidents elect that became presidents this year, 16 were former Interact members. That's amazing to me and I'm really pleased that this shows everyone that Interact not only develops leadership at the high school letter level but it also prom promotes Rotary for the future. On November the 8th we'll be having Presidents Elect training in at Cleveland at Lee University. This training will also include training for grants writers. So we need to have at least one person trained in the grant program. This is a good time to sign your MOU so that every club can participate in our grants program to get money back from the money that you donate to the foundation to use to work in your programs and to help the people around this district and also in global grants around the world. District Governor-elect Beth Stubbs would be real excited if you would submit the name of your president-elect and contact information to her before September the 30th. This will give us a chance to get in contact with all of our presidents-elect before the training so they can be notified about the November the 8th meeting in Cleveland. There's some real exciting news coming out of our seminars. This year we had four seminars. Of the four, we had almost 240 members being trained. This is a record in recent years. We hope to continue this next year and encourage more members to come to our seminars that will help you to make your club a better club and help the district grow. Thank you. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate John Germ on the, his selection to, the be, to be the president of Rotary International in 2016-17. That's truly an honor for him, but it's also a very special honor for our district. Congratulations, John. We wish you well. I, I know that I've changed a lot. I've gotten a lot more mature, a lot. I've grown up a lot, and it's just changed how 
I've thought about the rest of the world. I used I went down there thinking, oh man, it's just going to be just like the United States. We're just going to everybody's going to be here. It's just going to they're just going to be speaking Spanish. It's not the world's completely different, and the world's such a small place. I'm hoping to work in Chile, in a town two hours away from my where I lived. I was hoping to open up a underwater bit underwater welding business down there because it's a big ship port. So. The class school life was a little bit different. Uh, they're very stressed out over there. My classmates, average day of a Taiwanese student, wake up at six, get to school at seven, study from seven to eight, school from eight to five. From five to six, they have about an hour to get dinner. From seven to 11, they're at cram school. And cram school is like not even tutoring. Cram school is like, I'm best in this subject. I want to be better than everybody else. So they're there. They don't get home till about you know 11:30. Then they're doing their homework, and they will get bed to get to bed till close to one, and they repeat. So it's a it's a stressful life school-wise over there. But you know they're very task-oriented, very well-driven. So <laughs> I don't think I know. I still don't think I know Mandarin. <laughs> you know uh, I did have a very distinct advantage because my first host mother. I love her. She is just like a second mother to me. Um, she did everything she could to make sure that I was prepared and I was, you know, a well-rounded student over there. She taught me the culture and every night, I, necess I wouldn't necessarily want to do this every night, but every night she'd sit me down and we'd study Chinese together. And, you know, that gave me a huge jump start. I, you know, I had my little book. She'd go, this is ba, pa, ma, fu, ta, ta, le, ka, ji, chi, shi, du, du, And, you know, I learned. And you do learn. It's hard to get fluent, but you're conversational. You can, you can speak your mind and that's a good thing and to do that in any language is a good thing. The, the biggest challenge would be the language and the culture shock. Uh, it's, it's an Asian culture, it's uh, very different from the United States, the culture I've been used to my whole life. My whole life I've never really gotten out of Crossville so I, I did not know what to expect seeing other parts of the, the world. and the language, you know, the language is very easy to mess up on. You can, you can say, you can tell your mother to come here, please, and accidentally say, dog, come here. And it's, it's just, it's, it's a very fun time learning. It's a great culture shock, and you see parts of the world that you never thought you'd see. It was, it was a very large town of about 700,000 people. So living in Crossville with the... <laughs> 10,000 people at most. It, it's, it was a huge shock for me to see all those people, the cars, the traffic, the buildings, the skyscrapers. It was just, it was a very new experience for me. This host family, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I love them so much. I had three brothers who were 15, 18, and 22. The 22 year old didn't live with us, but he came to stay with us for a few weeks. And I did some stuff with him, and he called me his little sister. And then my other two host brothers, I got really close with the 15 year old, and we did stuff together all the time. The 18 year old, he's too cool for stuff like that, but he would still do stuff with me. Like the entire time I lived with him, we had a cookie war to see who could make better cookies. And that was really fun. And my host parents are incredible. My host mom, I love her so much. It was, it was just an awesome four months. I stayed with them the longest. The other two families were three months. And this one was four months. And I also, the girl I exchanged with uh, from my host club, uh, she went to Argentina and her family wanted to host me but couldn't because they lived in Paris and I lived two hours away. So during vacations and stuff I would spend a little time with them so I really got to visit Paris and I also got to visit an island off the coast a couple times with them because it's where they go on vacation usually. And they're really nice people, I love them too. It was, uh, it was awesome, it was a great exchange. I had like every experience was incredible because it's like no one gets to do this this is like a one in a once in a lifetime chance i'm thankful for all the experiences but i don't know i'd say being with other exchange students in the normandy district there were 18 of us 
like we were instantly the best of friends and we did stuff together each month but I got really close with um, two Canadians and a guy from Taiwan and one time they came to stay with me and my host family and we visited my town and we had a lot of fun and the cool thing about it was like my host family really liked them too so like it was just it was a really good vibe the whole time and like we ate dinner all together that that was like what like eight of us nine of us and it was just so fun we laughed the whole time and talked and it was just incredible I really enjoyed it I stayed in Naga City it's Mm, like I said, it was about eight hours south of Manila, and being as I was in an archipelago, I was really not near any beaches, which kind of caught me by surprise. A thing of 7,000 plus islands, and I was two hours from the nearest beach, so it was kind of a bummer at first, but I, I got used to it, and I liked it. It's a pretty small town. The only things that there really are to do in the town is we have a mall called SM City Naga, and then there's a street called Magsaysay, and that's where all the restaurants and, you know, the things like that are. There's a hotel there. It's called Avenue Plaza Hotel, and that's where me and my friends would always meet up. We'd hang out, we'd go get lunch, things like that. So, other than that, there's not too much going on in the city. It's uh, it's it's very nice though. It's it's a well-known city for being as small as it is, and the people there speak Bicol. It's in the Bicol region, so the language there's a little bit different than it is other places. So, I mean, there's like five different dialects going on just in that one city. So it makes it pretty hard to learn the language there but once you get past that and everything it's really easy and it's a really fun language to learn it's got some cool sounds in it it's it's a great program that lets you get to see the world in your own way you get to do things and just kinda experience it you get to learn a new language you get to meet people that'll change your life for the best and it's you know it's an opportunity that doesn't come up to a lot of people and the few people that do you know, get over the fear and everything and go do it, ultimately never regret it. I don't think I've ever met anyone or ever will meet someone who has regretted their exchange, ever. I don't know, I think I'm just generally more mature as a person. Um, and coming out of this year, I'm just, um, I'm really excited for um, the year to come and I'm, I've really had a great time so far um, hosting Pedro and we're, and I'm trying to take my experiences with my host families and just think um, what would the opposite of that be and just be the best host family we can for Pedro and so that's that's been fun I've enjoyed it a lot. Rotary Youth Exchange is it's amazing uh, it doesn't matter what your country is um, you have a great time with just the people that you meet and I suppose your school friends for some people um, the exchange friends learning a new language is incredible and doing and having learned one language um, mostly I feel that it's going to be a lot easier for me to learn languages in the future so um, yeah I I definitely recommend it then I went to my third host family and they were absolutely wonderful they they really opened the door of my exchange in the last two months and I miss them a lot I would recommend the exchange because it's a once in a lifetime experience unless you go on to but it'll change your life forever for the good even if your exchange is terrible you'll still come back better than you were before you left. <laughs>